Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name's George and today I'm going to show you how you can make your own epoxy resin floral coasters in a two-part pour process. To make your own resin trinket tray, you're going to need a few different things. So here I've got the Resonate Fillet Resin. So it's a two-to-one epoxy by volume. You can use, you know, whatever resin that you like to use whether it's UV or you measure it by weight and um, this is some opaque pigment to color the resin you can use whatever you like mica powders alcohol inks whatever you've got in your stash my trinket tray mold and this is last year's diary which I just use as a flat surface to keep my resin tray on because then it doesn't cure at an uneven level and this has got a nice plastic cover on so if I do spill I can just pick it straight off um, I've got some sticks here for adding my colours and for positioning my flowers and things. These are my measuring cups and this is my mixing pot and my mixing stick. I've also got some protective gloves and I would recommend that you wear some scruffy clothes because this can get very very sticky and you don't want to ruin your favourite top. For the first part of your pour you're going to need to mix up enough resin to fill just over halfway through your mould. So in my case that's 30 mils of resin and 15 mils of hardener and I've mixed it for three minutes. Next I'm going to pour our clear resin into our mould and I like to use my mixing stick to make sure I get as much resin out of my mixing bowl as possible. So I'm going to use some apple blossoms which I pressed myself and some hydrangea petals which I got from Resonate in my tray but you can use whatever you like. You might want to use gilding flakes or something like that instead of flowers. And all I'm going to do is just lie them face down in the resin wherever I want them. If you decide that you want to move something around take one of your smaller sticks and just gently move your flowers or your flakes or your petals around with your cocktail sticks. And when you're happy with your design, leave it in a safe place to cure. In my case, that's gonna be about 48 hours and then we'll be ready for the second part of our pouring. It's been 48 hours now and Hopefully you can hear that the first part of the resin has cured. So we're ready to do the second pour. So I'm just going to move this to one side and I'm going to add a colour to this. I've already mixed my resin and my hardener in my mixing cup but I like to reuse this over and over so I don't want to get it covered in pigment. So I tend to transfer any resins that I'm going to add anything to like mica or like um, these pigments here into these little plastic cups. So to add the colour I take a cocktail stick and I try and reuse these as well and just give my pigment a bit of a mix if it's been sitting and you don't need a lot of pigment. So just enough to cover the stick is plenty and then I just mix the pigment into my resin. When I'm happy that my resin and pigment are mixed enough, I just need to pour it into the mould. So I try and do it nice and steadily so that I don't get any air bubbles. If you do get air bubbles though, don't worry, you can use a heat tool or um, if you've got nothing else you can even use a match to um, heat the surface of the resin and that will bring all the bubbles to the surface and make them pop. You can use your mixing sticks to make sure you get all of your resin out of your pots, you don't want to waste it. Now you can see you might be able to see on the surface of my tray I've got these lines where I've poured twice so if I want to get rid of that I can just sort of 
swirl the surface of my resin with my stick which gives the whole thing a bit more of marbled appearance and now that's ready to cure and in 48 hours we can take it out of the mold so that's great I'm just cleaning up after we've poured the second part of the resin and I thought I'd like to share with you one of my little tips so resin pouring can be messy and you can get really sticky but if you use some nail varnish remover on the resin while it's still wet it mops up really nicely so I can clean this cup and use it again and that's what I do with my mixing and measuring cups as well so that I can reuse them. so I'm gonna leave this to cure and I'll see you when it's ready to take out the mold it's been another 48 hours now and as you can see the second layer of resin has cured so I'm going to take this out of the mold I haven't seen it so I don't know what it looks like there we go all done so to finish this off you can use wet dry paper just around the edges because you can I don't know if you can see you've got like a little lip there where the resins cl clung to the side of the mold but other than that it's finished it's ready to go and the molds ready to be used for another resin piece I hope you guys enjoyed that video if you did remember to like and subscribe and you can follow me on my other social media channels which I will link below and uh, until next time take care and I'll see you again <laughs>